We focus our work on the concept of embodied intelligence. So we have been building new tactile fingers for robot hands. And most people think of intelligence as residing exclusively in the computer, if it's artificial intelligence, or in the brain, if it's human intelligence. But that's not necessarily the case. You know, we are roboticists, and we're all about physical tasks in the real world. And when we do that, intelligence no longer should be confined just to the realm of the bits. The intelligent agent has a body. Uh, it's a robot. And in particular, we've been focusing on tactile sensing. Tactile sensing is key for embodied physical agents interacting with the world. If you think about the human hand, a marvel of engineering, more than 25 joints, individual degrees of freedom, more than 40 muscles articulating those joints. But then, of course, also the sensing mechanism. We have hundreds of individual mechanoreceptors in each fingertip that are constantly collecting different kinds of information about touch. The computational intelligence, the mechanical intelligence, the sensing intelligence, in biological evolution, all of these components evolve in lockstep together. So we've been asking, can we optimize the mechanical design of a robot at the same time as the computational policy with and for each other? And this is where we come to the big, big advances that we've seen in the last five years in the fields of machine learning and reinforcement learning. Some of these modern reinforcement learning techniques are really, really well suited for operating in situations where you have imperfect knowledge of the world. You can think of it almost as a muscle memory, right? Every time you hit a tennis ball, you don't have perfect knowledge of the ball's exact velocity and spin. You get your sensor data, which tells you something about the world, and then your muscle memory takes over and says, you know, last time the world looked like this, these are the actions that I took, and things turned out very well. In deep reinforcement learning, this takes the shape of a neural network. The input to the neural network consists of sensor information, and then the output consists of commands to your motors. And our sensors are designed from the ground up, knowing that they will be used in conjunction with machine learning and reinforcement learning methods to mine it for the information that's relevant to manipulation. And all of those can be designed to react appropriately to unforeseen circumstances, which is the definition of intelligence, right? To do the right thing when you are faced with a situation that hasn't been predicted. What we'd like to do is move away from the paradigm where one group designs the mechanism and then kind of throws it over the wall and says, hey, computational people, you take it from there. The mechanism looks about right. It should be able to do everything. It's just a software problem from now on. And then you get the software people saying, oh, it's the mechanism that's letting us down. Our software is very intelligent. What we're saying is that if you think about them as a whole, that's when we're going to see a very noticeable improvement in performance. Because when you talk about embodied intelligent agents, there is really no choice but to look at the mechanism, the sensing suite, and the computational aspects, all of them together.